Let me tell you a story. When I was a child growing up in San Francisco area, I used to visit the Japanese tea garden and to visit the carp swimming just beneath the lily pads in a two-dimensional pond. I used to spend hours looking at them. They would swim forward, backward, left and right. Their eyes were to the side and they couldn't see me. I was in the third dimension. I was in hyperspace. They were totally unaware that there was a universe beyond their pond. And then I thought, well, what happens if I reach down and grab one of the fish, lift the fish up? Maybe that fish was a scientist. And the scientist would say, bah, humbug, science fiction. There's no world of up. Up does not exist. Well, I would grab this scientist, lift them up in the world of up, hyperspace, the third dimension. What would he see? He would see beings breathing without water, a new law of biology. Beings moving without fins, a new law of physics. And then I would put the fish back into the pond. What kind of stories would he tell? Well, today we physicists believe, we cannot prove it yet, but we are the fish. Let's imagine that we are perfectly flat. I mean, absolutely flat, and that we live appropriately enough, in a flat land. Now, a three-dimensional creature exists in flat land only partially. Only a plane, a cross-section through him can be seen. So when the three-dimensional creature first reaches flat land, it's only the points of contact which can be seen. And we represent that by stamping the apple in this ink pad and placing that image in flat land. And as the apple were to descend through, slither by flatland, we would progressively see higher and higher slices. So the square, as time goes on, sees a set of objects mysteriously appear from nowhere and inside a closed room and change their shape dramatically. His only conclusion could be that he's gone bonkers. We spend all our life in three dimensions. We go forward, backward, left, right, up, down, thinking that anything beyond our pond, anything beyond our little puny universe is science fiction. We say, bah, humbug. We can't say that anymore because the concept of higher dimensions now is the biggest game in town. You see, in three dimensions, there's not enough room to put all the laws of physics. But when you go to this larger pond, this pond of hyperspace, then all the laws of physics just fit together like a jigsaw puzzle. In our three dimension, the laws of physics are there. We can explain things, but there are lots of, of, of pieces that seem to be random, that you have to enter constants by hand. And so you might have two dozen, 30 or so constants of physics and more in cosmology. And, and they, they look like they all have nothing to do with one another. That's right. I like to think of a crystal. Let's say a crystal, a beautiful crystal, shatters and lands on a tabletop. And they're little insect-like flatlanders living on this tabletop. And they say, let us reassemble the crystal. Well, they bring it together and then they have one crystal. It's called the quantum theory. Okay. They, they assemble other pieces of the crystal. It's called relativity, the theory of space-time. But then they try to bring these two chunks together and they cannot. No matter how they bring these chunks together, they cannot. And then one day, Someone says, let us go to the world of up. Let us move one crystal up and then fit it into the third dimension and it will create a beautiful unified crystal. That's where we are today, we think. We live in a three-dimensional world. We see pieces. We see the electromagnetic force. We see gravity. We see nuclear force. Little pieces of this unified field theory. We bring them together. Now we have the theory of the quantum theory, the theory of the small, the theory of atoms. We have the theory of Einstein, the theory of space, time, relativity, but they don't fit together until you go into hyperspace and then they fit together beautifully. What about the fourth dimension? Now to approach that, let's consider a cube. We can imagine a cube in the following way. You take a line segment and move it at right angles to itself an equal length. That makes a square. Move that square in equal length at right angles to itself, and you have a cube. Now, this cube, we understand, um, casts a shadow. And that shadow 
we recognize. It's, you know, ordinarily drawn in uh, third grade classrooms as two squares with their vertices connected. Now, if we look at the shadow of a three-dimensional object in two dimensions, we see that, in this case, not all the lines appear equal. Not all the angles are right angles. The three-dimensional object has not been perfectly represented in its projection in two dimensions, but that's part of the cost of losing a dimension in the projection. Now, let's take this three-dimensional cube and project it, carry it, to a fourth physical dimension. Not that way, not that way, not that way, but at right angles to those three directions. I can't show you what direction that is but imagine that there is a fourth physical dimension. In that case, we would generate a four-dimensional hypercube, which is also called a tesseract. I cannot show you a tesseract because I and you are trapped in three dimensions. But what I can show you is the shadow in three dimensions of a four-dimensional hypercube or tesseract. This is it. And you can see it's two nested cubes all the vertices connected by lines. And now the real tesseract in four dimensions would have all the lines of equal length and all the angles right angles. That's not what we see here, but that's the penalty of projection. So you see, while we cannot imagine the world of four dimensions, we can certainly think about it perfectly well. Today we see the world as is very broken. <clears throat> we see pieces of it. But at the beginning of time, when the universe was first created, that's when the crystal existed in its perfect form. We call it the super force. A single super force held this crystal together. But then we had the Big Bang, which shattered this crystal, giving us the shattered universe of today. When you look around you and you see the different forces, mountains, clouds, planets, it's broken. We live in a horribly broken world. But at the instant of creation, there was perfection. There was perfection in a higher dimension. This perfection cannot exist in three dimensions. Now, some people say, well, why 10? Why 11? Well, it turns out that there are certain magic numbers in mathematics, numbers which have spectacular properties. It turns out that if you go to a 13-dimensional universe, a 15-dimensional universe, it's unstable. Particles would prefer to collapse down to 10 or 11 mm. dimensions because the mathematics shows that self-consistency is important. They're unstable. Universes in, in 29 dimensions are simply unstable. In this crystal, the crystal exists in a higher dimension, but it eventually cracked apart for reasons that we are still trying to understand. And the three-dimensional world we see today is quite broken. Now, where are these higher dimensions? Look at smoke. Smoke permeates throughout a room. Smoke permeates in all three dimensions, but smoke never disappears. Smoke never floats into the fourth dimension. Therefore, a fourth, fifth, sixth dimension has to be smaller than smoke. But atoms also don't suddenly drift away into hyperspace. Therefore, these higher dimensions have to be smaller than an atom, or else our universe would float away, <laughs> okay? So we think that at the beginning of time, there was this perfection of 10 or 11 dimensional hyperspace, but these other dimensions curled up, so small that atoms cannot leak mm. into these higher mm. dimensions. The universe we see around us really is hyperdimensional, but we can't see it because these other dimensions have curled up, they're too small to be observed. I could put sheets of paper on the table, comb my hair, and you do this in elementary school, pick up the sheets of paper. Well, I just defied gravity. The Earth weighs six trillion trillion kilograms. I defied six trillion trillion kilograms with a comb <laughs> by picking up pieces of paper oh, with yeah. the electric force. Right. That's how weak gravity is. <laughs> and perhaps these higher dimensions is due to the fact that space oozes, a gravity oozes into these higher dimensions. Now these, if we look at the possibility of these large extra dimensions, which you said might be infinite in size, are we limited to these uh, extra six or seven dimensions other than the three we see? Or might there be a vast number of infinite number of, of, of dimensions as well as each one being infinite in size? How, how many infinities are we dealing with here? Well, we think that 11 is the upper limit. Uh, some people actually have looked at 12 dimensions. In 12 dimensions, we have two times.
but in 13 dimensions, the universe becomes really unstable. I've looked at 13, it's, it's a horrible dimension to work with mathematically. 12 seems to be the limit, and even in 12 dimensions, you have double times. Yeah, I don't know what to make of that. <laughs> <laughs> right. But one thing is maybe we can experimentally see some of these uh, objects, because if, so if a universe is hovering just above you, the, it is invisible to you, light goes underneath, and that may explain dark matter. Dark matter is invisible, it has gravity. We, the Hubble Space Telescope has given us maps sure. of this invisible matter. Maybe it's nothing but an ordinary galaxy hovering just above us in another dimension. Mm. If you read H.G. Wells' famous novel, The Invisible Man, he becomes invisible because he's blown into the fourth dimension. He's hovering just above us. Light goes underneath the invisible man, but he can look down on us. So perhaps dark matter, which makes up most of the matter of the universe, is nothing but ordinary matter of a galaxy hovering in a parallel universe just above us. We are like flies on flypaper. The flypaper represents our universe. We're stuck, we can't get off. But gravity oozes between flypapers. And therefore, we can actually perhaps detect experimentally the presence of alternate universes. This is not just science fiction. Perhaps with our instruments, we can detect dark matter like objects from other universes hovering just above our universe because gravity oozes between dimensions.